What is the mind of God that Albert Einstein chased after for 30 years of his life? Einstein wanted an equation that would unify gravity, the electromagnetic force, and the two nuclear forces. He wanted unification of all four forces into one theory, the theory of everything, the God equation. My name is Professor Michio Kaku. I'm a professor of theoretical physics at the City University of New York and author of the recent book, The God Equation, The Quest for the Theory of Everything. Leonard Euler, one of the great mathematicians of human history, found one equation which summarized the fundamental constants of math. One plus e to the i pi equals zero. People call that the God equation of mathematics. Now, of course, the God equation is useless as a practical application. But think now of a God equation for physics. Physics is quite useful. When Newton worked out the mechanics of moving objects and gravity, he helped to lay the groundwork for the Industrial Revolution. And then Maxwell and Faraday united electricity and magnetism to give us the electromagnetic force, the electric revolution of dynamos, generators, and light bulbs. And now we have E equals MC squared, which helped to pave the way for the nuclear force. Each time a force was unraveled, it changed human history. And now we want to put the whole thing together into the God equation, fulfilling Einstein's original dream. The God equation, just like the God equation of mathematics, should unify the basic concepts of physics into one equation. And what are these basic concepts? Relativity and the quantum theory. The problem is, the quantum theory does not unify well with general relativity. See, general relativity of Einstein is based on smooth surfaces. The quantum theory is based on chopping things up into particles. That's the opposite of Einstein's philosophy of smooth curves representing space-time. That's why it's so difficult. It's no exaggeration to say that the greatest minds of the entire human race have made proposals for this grand final theory of everything. Each one was shown to be anomalous or divergent. So far, there's only one theory which has survived every challenge, string theory, which is what I do for a living. Basic version I know of is, is Feynman's version, which uh, essentially says particles are particles and they hop from place to place with a particular probability. And the probability that a particle that's at some place will be at some different place later is given by a very simple rule. Um, it uses a quantity called the action, which is to do with the mass of the particle and the time and the distance. Uh, and, and you, So you basically calculate these little uh, quantities, which are to do with something called the action, and you add them up. So if I, if I start with an electron in one corner of the room, and I say, what's the probability at some time later it'll be somewhere else? And then at every point in the room, you can assign a probability that it will be there at a later point with one simple rule. This theory of everything blows your mind. It allows for the presence of perhaps time machines, wormholes, the universe before the Big Bang, parallel universes, the multiverse, things out of the twilight zone. Can you go backwards in time and meet your parents before you're born? Can you travel faster than the speed of light through a wormhole? We don't know. That's why we need string theory.